Howdy folks, I'm Luke, an instructor and video creator here at Covalence. Welcome to my TypeScript tips series, where I'm gonna break down the nuts and bolts of TypeScript, answering some of the most common questions, and more importantly, the most common errors I get from my students. In today's episode, I'm focusing on a fundamental concept in TypeScript, functions. Functions can be a bit tricky when you're starting out, but don't worry, I've got you covered. We're gonna explore what functions are, how they work, and I'm gonna share some useful tips on using functions effectively in TypeScript. So whether you are a complete newbie or you are already on a TypeScript journey, welcome. This video is designed to help you better understand and navigate this stuff. So are you ready to become a pro at TypeScript functions? Let's dive on in. Right, so I have a very simple VS Code window running here where I've uh, installed TypeScript into a Node project. I built a simple app TS and I'm watching it here. I'll have a link to this starter repo if you really want it in the description down below. Otherwise, feel free to set up your own TypeScript environment or use something like Code Sandbox and find a TypeScript template. Other than that, we're gonna be talking about functions. So remind ourselves what they look like. Uh, we have, I mean, granted, we should know what they look like, but. We have our function keyword, nothing to it. Then we have our function name. This is the, uh, where we name our function. I'm gonna call it greet. Then we're gonna have our function parameters, which will be found inside a set of parentheses. And in my case, let's how about we have a parameter called name that will be a name we're going to greet in our output. Then we have what's called the function body inside of our curly braces, where I'm going to have any amount of code that runs. In JavaScript, if I have any code that runs in the function body with no return value, it will return undefined by default. However, if I provide a return value, then that function is going to return some kind of data, meaning we can return a concatenated string value of hello plus the stranger's name we are trying to greet. Now, this is a vanilla JS function. Uh, and it's totally fine. And again, in TypeScript, if things are like a spectrum is what I tell my students where you could totally leave it here and allow implicit any's and to have it be really loosey goosey and just add types over time to help you out and boost your IntelliSense auto completes all the way to if I was working on a massive team of people, like a collaborative enterprise level project, I'm probably gonna be strong typing every nook and cranny of my code. So again, start out small and then add more over time as you get better and better. That's the way I say you approach it. So we have to add some type annotations to turn this JavaScript function into a TypeScript function. To do so, we have to look at both our return type and our parameters. Our parameters, aka anything here in the parentheses, we have to tell with TypeScript with type annotations, hey, what kind of parameter is this? Is it optional? Can it be undefined? What's it look like? What is it? Well, in our case, it's a string, right? It's a name we're gonna pass in. How do we pass in a type annotation? Well, we're gonna write in a colon and then the data type here in TypeScript as string. From there, we can also add what the return type of the function is going to be as well. We do so outside of our uh, parameters parentheses by adding the same thing, a colon and the return data type of our function, which is this concatenated string right here. For example, if I returned a one value from here, I'll get an error because I told TypeScript that it's a return value of string. So this alone can help you not make mistakes when writing out long or complex functions and need to return a specific data type. Let's undo that and go back to the correct version. So that's how we can have our type annotations help us already by adding some simple parameter type, uh, type and a return type to our functions to make sure that they behave the way you need them to behave. From there, we have a cool feature in TypeScript called optional parameters. Uh, It'll be cool if it hits JS someday. To my knowledge, it doesn't exist yet, but we have the ability to add a question mark to our list of parameters. This will make it so I can call greet if I wanted to with no arguments, uh, no parameters, arguments, whatever you want to call them. Now, keep in mind, this is also valid JavaScript in the, that if I don't provide parameters to a function when it's expecting them, they will uh, come up as undefined. So in our code here, I would either have to write some kind of if type of name is undefined, uh, if block to return earlier, return something custom, or I could do something akin to the following where I can say, hey, is name a truthy or falsy value? In uh, the case of no parameter, that's undefined. Undefined is a falsy value, or I'll say if it's truthy, use the name. Otherwise, say hello stranger. That way we can have some kind of fallback for our code here in the case of an optional parameter, which I think is pretty dang cool. So remember, it will default to undefined should one not be provided. But more interestingly, let's go back to what we had a moment ago, back to name here. And and again, if I pass in like a name of Luke, that's all fine and dandy. I don't get any kind of errors. Now, if I make name required and I go back to not providing a name, we get our lovely error here that tells us, hey, this needs a name parameter of type string and you're not giving me anything whatsoever, which I think is pretty cool. This is a feature in uh, vanilla JavaScript, but is also cool to utilize here in TypeScript where we can provide default 
arguments to our parameters. So instead of having to write some kind of ternary or condition, we can simply provide a default arg. And as long as that type matches the type we told it's gonna be, we can't, for example, pass in a one because now it's like, hey, you said name's a string, but you can't uh, assign it a default value of the number one here, right? So we can do that right there. That way the default, if it's called without a parameter, instead of defaulting to undefined and uh, making us write out that code, we can use this here. So like I said, this is not TypeScript specific, but again, this is what the syntax looks like to provide a default parameter on a TypeScript function parameter. So uh, we can also do something akin to this, where we have a the ability to pull out the rest of our parameters and we can say, hey, it is going to be a string array of the rest of our parameters, right? That way we have an, if we have like a, arbitrary and undetermined amount of parameters in this function, uh, and we only care about the first one, we can grab the rest as the dot, dot, dot rest, right? These are what are called rest parameters. That way, again, we can have as many as we want passed in and we could utilize them. Uh, and it represents an indefinite number of arguments as an array. So we can also say like, hello name plus comma space plus, and then we can do something like uh, names dot, yep autocomplete names or rest uh, dot join and we can join all the names and greet everybody like that right there. So that's pretty cool. Nope, not dot 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 rest, just rest. And again, this would make more sense if we change it to a parameter val uh, variable like names instead of rest, but that's the exact same thing, right? So that's how we could uh, utilize TypeScript functions and the rest parameters, right? This represents an indefinite number of other things we might be passing in. Uh, other things we can talk about here in TypeScript and functions is this one's a bit more advanced, but I want to include it in here because this is probably the most common error uh, we will get asked in our Discord channel or in our webinars from students when they're first learning TypeScript, and especially using functions from other libraries. They get a very common error that looks akin to the following. So let's uh, delete the greet function because we're done messing with it right there and talking about all these little uh, properties of TypeScript functions. Let me show you the following. We can do this, okay? We have a function that can concatenate strings. We have a function that can add numbers. Then we're gonna have our function down yonder that will be of type anys, check this out. Now, you might be wondering, why did you make two empty functions? I didn't, these are actually TypeScript definitions that are being added to one singular function, and I'll show you how it works. We can say, if type of argument A is a string and type of B is also a string, this will then return A plus B, which should be a concatenated, concatenated string. Otherwise, it can return A plus B, which should be a number, so it should be adding numbers. So this is a very common thing that my students run into when using uh, type script uh, functions with types from other libraries where they might try and call their function like the following and do a number and a string, and they get this error right here. Uh, no overloads match this call. So a function overloading is what allows multiple function types for the same function. This is where you start dealing with lots of optional properties or arguments or parameters and things like that, or multiple ways to call the same function that may drastically alter its returned results, for example. So uh, it can be used to define multiple ways of calling the same function. That's all overloads are, and TypeScript will check the function call against the definition. So if you see no overloads match this call, double check what parameters you're passing into your function to see if that's the case here. And that's, again, the most common thing I'll see with TypeScript uh, newbies is that error right there. But if I change it to just two numbers or back to two strings, then it's totally fine with both of those. But mixing and matching is a no go. So yeah, uh, I want to keep this video series pretty short, unlike my normally long-winded videos. So that's, we've covered a, a decent bit in a short amount of time. We had a refresher on JavaScript functions, reminding us of the basic structure and how return statements work. From there, we jumped into TS and explored how it enhances JavaScript functions with type annotations. Uh, we then dove into optional parameters, default parameters, rest parameters, which are all powerful features in TypeScript and some JavaScript that can give your code more flexibility and readability. And we touched upon function overloading a little bit in a advanced feature that can be very useful when you need to handle when your function needs to handle different types of parameters when called. Remember, practice makes perfect, so I encourage you all to try going out there and writing your own TypeScript functions, experimenting with these features we talked about today, and as always, don't hesitate to reach out with any questions you might have. Remember to like and comment this video as well as to subscribe to our lovely channel for more content like this. Thank you for joining me, and keep coding.